what is up everybody, it's Chrome Homes just here again with another video, and today it's going to be my fourth q and it's going to be the fourth edition of my Q&A, and on my Who's Better video, Jeff Hardy vs. Edge, um, I did it where you could um, send questions from that video, and it would be answered, a lot of people send a lot of questions where, um, well, a couple people send in a lot of questions, and so we got a lot of questions answered today, but, uh, but for the people that did send in questions, you're going to get a, lot, a couple of shout-outs. I'll put your link down in the description box below, and uh, hopefully this gives your channel some boost, I hope. Um, I know I'm not the biggest help, but I hope that this will give you some recognition. Um, some people don't need it, some people do, I hope, um, but whatever. Um, we have Neon Dreams 98 um, Will Ferrell number 1, Mr. Diddlesworth, I Am Forever the Eagle, Jamin 1998 and Jersey 12361. So those guys, their links will be in the description box below. Um, and they got a shout out for asking a lot of questions. Really appreciate that, guys, a lot. That means a lot. But thank you very much. Let's go ahead and go to the first question. Will WrestleMania? What would WrestleMania be if Undertaker never existed? I think there would be a lot of more celebrities or more big time with more big matches, big time matches with like previous stars, like you know how you see how they're bringing, they used to bring in The Rock, and they bring in Lesnar and stuff like that, they'd have more of that, and, but you know, it, it, it's different things they could possibly, um, there's different things they could possibly have done without The Undertaker, I don't think if there was The Undertaker, there wouldn't be a lot of these big marquee matches, because a lot of people come to go to WrestleMania just because The Undertaker's there, just because he has a legendary streak, um, so, it's kind of, they might have to build somebody else up to a, an extent where they could be the streak, but it wouldn't be the same if it was The Undertaker with his eerie and amazing entrance. But, and there's different other things, that elements that, that are from The Undertaker and the way that he has been, you know, presented from, from an audience or from a viewer standpoint that they like The Undertaker and they want to come see him enough because that's what, how much they love The Undertaker and how much he, he means to WrestleMania. So, there would be a lot of more promotion. I don't think it would be, like, a lot different from what it is, but WrestleMania would look a little different from what it normally is now, because normally WWE doesn't rely on previous and past stars, because that old viewing audience, when they had so much rating, and they had many ratings there, you know, that's why they brought in The Rock, and they got a million pay-per-view buys plus at WrestleMania 29. Um, Undertaker, is he somewhat responsible for it? Yes. But is the wrong most you're supposed to work? Yes. So it would be a little different. Um, a very it would be very strange because you know it is his show. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be a lot different. Um, but it's hard to think about that. If you could keep one DVD that you own, what would it be and why? Well, I'd keep WrestleMania 17 because it's, a, it's an amazing show. I love this and and the fact that it was such a great Christmas present. I mean, it was awesome. I think it was amazing. Um, just to have that. Um, uh, you know, I put it on the list. But I was like, no, I'm not going to get it. I guess I'll just buy it another day. And it wind up being, um, I got WrestleMania 17. It was in amazing condition. It had the insert and everything. So I'd, I'd keep that one. There's a, I mean, I love all my DVDs. Um, but WrestleMania 17 is up there. It's one of the most prized possessions. And the other one I would choose would be, or it would it'd be WrestleMania 17 or the Royal Rumble Anthology 2003-2007. Very special one of the first DVDs I ever got. Um, and I watched it over and over again countless times, and that's some some of the reason why I liked Royal Rumble 2005 and the year of 2005 and the year of 2006, just because it was so cool, um, you know, and stuff like that. Um, for the Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble anthology, and I could just look and see who would be coming out next, who's this guy, and I'd finally get, you know, used with some of these wrestlers, so it was pretty cool. Um, uh, to have the Royal Rumble anthology there, the, but again, then again, WrestleMania 17 or Royal Rumble anthology, 2003-2007. Um, will you consider doing contests or giveaway? Uh, yes, eventually I might do one. Um, I, I don't know when exactly I'll do a contest or giveaway. Maybe I will do one giving away a DVD in the future. Um, maybe like a Blu-ray or whatever. So I can have like a WrestleMania, um, WrestleMania kind of thing or a WrestleMania contest. I give you a Blu-ray WrestleMania 30. Um, of course, I'm going to get a Blu-ray WrestleMania 30 and I'm going to get a regular copy of WrestleMania 30. But I'm not sure I can do what, I might do one for the Royal Rumble, I might do one, I don't know, but it's got to be something that's interactive and it's very competitive to the point where, like, you don't know who's going to win. Just, it just can't be, like, five people in there and, or whatever, and it takes a little bit of prepping to do and a little bit of thinking, so. But yes, eventually I probably will do one. What inspired you to make, what inspired you to make videos? Now, that was pretty weird how I said, I was like, what, what is that? I mean, you but anyway, honestly, I saw, I was first wanting to be a gaming 
channel because I watch a lot of gaming videos of like uh, Call of Duty and you know different things like that and GTA and I really wanted to get into you know video games and stuff like that and then I got I purchased a Roxio game capture uh, that didn't work out so well and like we couldn't get hooked up hooked up to our TV the quality was bad even if I didn't get it hooked up and I don't think my video game channel would be very successful either um, and then I started you know becoming then I just started thinking well I've been a I'm a huge wrestling fan, you know, and I see other people that are doing these wrestling reviews, so I just caught on and figured I'd make a video on my old channel. If you want to know where that is, um, if you want to see how bad it is, I'll go ahead and put that in the description box below. Um, there's actually some pretty funny stuff on there. If you, if you really, if you, if you want to get bored to death, if you want to see something funny, um, then go to my channel, my old channel, uh, before I made this one. I made this one on January 20th, and then I figured out, oh, well, I have a DVD collection, I saw Steve, Stevie Breach and some other people, and I figured, well, I'll just make a DVD collection video, do reviews and all that kind of good stuff, and talk about wrestling, and like, not like a lot of people do. So I figured I'd do that, and that's what kind of made me eventually want to do it, because I, also, I saw other people doing it, and I thought it looked pretty cool, and I thought I could do it as well. And it, sometimes I really think I could, I, I think I could do it better um, than a lot of other people that I see on there. And I, and I just wanted to also have a conversation with other people about wrestling, so that, that's pretty cool to have, and have an audience that actually wants to watch your videos, so. Um, next one, if you had a chance to go back in time and watch any match from any promotion at ringside, what would you be? What would that match be and why? That's a, that's a really good question. There's so many. If I could, I'd do every show. <laughs> um, because there's like, there's any Undertaker match at WrestleMania, um, there's like two that I'll narrow it down to, and then I'll give you reasons why. Um, any ladder match, um, there's, there's a lot. I mean, there's like big match situations I like to go to. A lot of matches at WrestleMania 17, but there's two in particular that I want to go to. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10. That's one big one. Um, because that was a big match. That match was that match was awesome. That was the first ever, well, not really the first ever ladder match, but that was a really big ladder match, um, because I believe there was a match in 1992 between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, um, but it's not really recognized that much. But at WrestleMania 10, that was definitely a big monumental match, and I would love to see, the, like, the spots that Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon performed and the, and the way they used the ladder. That would have been awesome to see. The other one is ECW One Night Stand 2006, John Cena versus Rob Van Dam. I thought that was the, the crowd there was electric. I'd just love to be there, just chant how much I hate Cena, and pull over RVD and see RVD win his first ever WWE Championship, and, you know, just be in that atmosphere at the Hammerstein Ballroom, um, or any match on that card, to, you know, to be honest with you, at, at ECW One Night Stand, uh, 2006. Um, 2005 would have been cool to go to as well, but, you know, 2006 is up there. Or any, and the other, and, the, and there's one more match that I'd like to go to, and that's Royal Rumble 2005. The Royal Rumble match is up. I love the Royal Rumble. I think, I think it's an awesome Royal Rumble. One of my favorites, actually. Um, next one. Do you watch TNA? Yes, but my hand is constantly on the fast forward button. Um, if Stone Cold Steve Austin never existed, do you think WCW would have won the Monday Night War? There's no question in my mind that, that they would have won. Because there's nobody pro wrestling in the, in the, like, in the pro wrestling business like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Because Stone Cold Steve Austin was just different from a lot of people with the ambiances he added. And you know, the obvious he had, the nuances he added, like, with the different things he'd do, the, you know, the, um, the flip you off, uh, he, he'd cuss in your face, you know, he'd give you a stutter, you know, there's nobody that had the guts to do that, there's nobody that was like Stockwell Steve Austin that had the same vibrance and that got people to want to cheer for him like Stockwell Steve Austin got, um, so no, I think, I think that the Monday Night Wars, WCW would have definitely won. And, you know, you can say, oh, The Rock would have done really good because, you know, 2000 was the monumental year where they just pulled away. Yes, to some to some degree, but if it wasn't for Stone Cold, he wouldn't have gotten it over and wouldn't have gotten any attention in the eye of many. So, and the next question, do you think they would even drop the ball with Ryback? I'm not, I'm not going to say two words. Actually, three. Yes, big time. If there was no WWE, would there be a TNA? Nope, there wouldn't be there to be because the reason why WC, the reason why TNA formed was because Jeff Jarrett and wanted to make a new company because there's only really one independent, there was only one promotion in the world, the World Wrestling Federation at that time. So he made TNA in 2002. Um, they had a, you know, they had an annual show, and that's when Ring of Honor came into the picture as well. Um, so instead of it just be like little small independent promotions, it turned into two big promotions that came out of that, which is Ring of Honor and TNA. 
So if WWE, if there would be no WWE, there would be no TNA, and I don't think I'd be talking to you if there was no WWE. So what made you get to wrestling videos? Almost the same thing as I just said. I, I saw. I saw. This is the question. This is the answer that I have on here. I saw that my WWE collection was growing, and that's true. And I knew that I knew that my mind about wrestling and everything surrounded the business. Uh, I knew. So that's hard to think. But there's like, I didn't want to go in there, you know, looking like a chicken with my head cut off and be like, uh, well, that was a botch, and I don't even know what a botch means. Um, so or that was a heel, and I don't know what you know. The, I don't know what heal means, you know, that's what I, I wanted to get, a, I knew that the way I was going, and the way that I have a memory, I have a pretty good memory of many things in my life, and most of that is wrestling related, so, due to the fact that I have a humongous head, most of it is filled with pro wrestling, and 50% mostly, maybe 25, I don't know, but most of it is filled with pro wrestling, so, and, you know, I knew that I had a little bit, I have knowledge, I guess you could say, for, I guess you could say the age that I am, and I, and like I said, I also have many, many fond memories of old wrestling back when wrestling was TV 14, so again, like, the other past knowledge, other stuff that I was gaining from other people watching them say heel, face, um, botch, over, and stuff like that, you know, it just grew, and with DV Clutch, it's like, oh, well, there you go, and, uh, other wrestling what TV shows do you watch? Ah, oh, man, there's there's a couple of them. There's um there's there's a couple of TV shows I watch. I don't watch TV a lot, to be honest with you. Um, Duck Dynasty, Sports Center, and Practical Jokers, Around the Horn on ESPN. Sometimes I'll occasionally watch some old shows like uh, Martin, you know, Martin Lawrence and stuff like that, uh, Drake and Josh or whatever, and that's on. And, but normally my life revolves around God, family, wrestling, and sports. So, and then, then next question, PS3 versus Xbox 360, PS3 all day, um, PS3. Favorite video game of all time, Grand Theft Auto 4 or SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, or 2006, or it's 2007. Um, I, on the PS3, 2006 versus 2000, or 2007, SmackDown vs. Raw is amazing. Um, Here Comes the Pain is really good, but I didn't play Here Comes the Pain a lot. I played, like, 2006 versus 2007 SVR so much, like, it's crazy, and I played Grand Theft Auto 4 a lot, too, and I still love that game. I, even though Grand Theft Auto 5 is out, I really love Grand Theft Auto 4. I think that game's amazing, um, to be honest with you. Um, I also like Call of Duty Black Ops a lot, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, because I was like, well, it wasn't the first Call of Duty I played. But I really like the, you know, the feel of that game. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see, next question. Favorite game at the moment, Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, Call of Duty or Battlefield? Call of Duty, don't play Battlefield a lot. The only thing I played Battlefield was Battlefield 3 at one point, and it was just like the campaign I didn't, and I got bored. Um, what PS3 games do you play? Grand Theft Auto 4 and Grand Theft Auto 5, WWE 2K14 from time to time, NBA 2K14, Call of Duty Ghost, very, very rarely. Um, and occasionally I break out the old Call of Duties like Black Ops 1 and 2. Also, Hitman Absolution and some sports games. Um, what type of music do you listen to? What is your favorite song of all time? I listen to rap and hip hop occasionally. Now, very, 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 very rarely do I listen to country. So you think, by the way, that where I'm from. And what my accent is, you think that I listen to country all day, but that's not the case. I listen to rap and hip hop. I get down with some ASAP Ferg, uh, ASAP Rocky, Drake. Um, but there's a lot of people I like to listen to rap. But my favorite song of all time, I don't know. I have many favorite songs. I don't really recall my favorite song of all time. Uh, do you watch Sons of Anarchy Justified the Americans? Don't watch any of them. I'm sorry, we're number one. What do you think of Bad News Barrett? I think it's stupid, honestly. I think it's a terrible way to use Wade or What a Waste Barrett. Um, I think it's, it's horrible. And they changed his name from Wade Barrett to Bad News Barrett. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Good riddance, Wade Barrett. Good riddance. Um, his career just went just down the drain instantly. Do you like the J.B., L and Cole show? Sorry. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> But I don't. I try to stay as far away from Michael Cole as I can. Uh, this is from Neon Dreams 98. I know this. Um, do you watch the NHL? If so, favorite team? I don't watch it often, but I like playing the video games. Like, I used to have NHL 10, NHL 12. Um, the video games are really fun to play. I know, 
I know being from North Carolina, you kind of have to be, um, kind of have to like the Carolina Hurricanes, but I like the Hurricanes, but if I had to choose a favorite team, it would be the Carolina Hurricanes, but I, I'm more of a San Jose Sharks kind of guy myself, but I do like the Hurricanes, like I said. Uh, now we get to the final four questions. <coughs> Let's go ahead and get my voice ready, because I don't have to do a lot of explaining. Greatest wrestler to never win a title. Greatest wrestler ever to never win a title. Um, there's about there's a couple people that I can put in this category. Owen Hart, Kurt Henning, Ted DiBiase, Mr. Kennedy, Raven, Rikishi, Vader, and Goldust. That's eight guys. Now there's a couple more you can argue with me. But the there's a lot of guys that I like. But there's some guys that are on this list that I really don't care. But there's some guys on this list that are not the greatest ever. Uh, Mr. Kennedy's not on here. Uh, Goldust, Rikishi, and Vader are not on here. Kurt, H Kurt Henning is sad to say it. Ted DiBiase is up there. Roddy Roddy Piper's up there. I really like Raven. But Owen Hart is definitely the greatest wrestler to never win a world title. The guy should have won a world title. Around, I mean, even if it was a brief title run in 94, when he faced, when he had a feud and program with Bret Hart, you know, when they faced each other in still cage match at SummerSlam, when they faced each other in um, at WrestleMania 10, uh, when they were feuding a lot, and they were a tag team when they split up at Royal Rumble, um, 94, you know, I think that, that that should have been the point where Owen Hart shined, and Owen Hart should have carried the company, and then Bret Hart, they, you know, he had a, a hero storyline going, so, Owen Hart was definitely, definitely underutilized, he should have won the title, but, and, and it's sad to think that the guy never won a title, and, you know, he's more remembered, you know, jumping off the rafters as the Blue Blazer, um, and, and dying and falling a couple of feet, which is pretty sad. More than he is, his monumental and amazing career as a professional wrestler and had so many fantastic matches. But, you know, it, it's whatever. You can't do anything now. Uh, Owen Hart, definitely a legend. Um, never will be inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, due to the fact that his wife doesn't go against it. She was even pissed off that they, that they released Heart and Soul, the DVD. Um, so, more than likely, they're not going to they're not, and, and, and they, and I'm, I don't know what they were gonna, I don't know what she said, because in the 50, the 50 years of sports entertainment documentary they did with WWE, um, recently, they had a where, you know, um, they had Owen Hart, and they discussed his death and everything, so I don't know how she reacted to that, I mean, they just went ahead and did it, because, you know, they own all the library and stuff like that, I mean, it would never be released on home video, the exact, uh, video of when Owen Hart died, yes, there's Owen, there's Over the Edge pay-per-view, but, like, you know, they won't show it to him falling down, because they didn't. You know, he's supposed to be the godfather. So, you know, it's, it's sad to think that, that that happened to Owen Hart, so, but Owen Hart should definitely won a world title. Greatest person currently in WWE or TNA to never win a world title. Um, honestly, preference, by preference, Antonio Cesaro is probably my number one choice. My number two choice is Cody Rhodes currently. Um, I think Antonio Cesaro is awesome. Cesaro is great. Um, definitely should be world champ. Bray Wyatt's up there, but he's not the greatest wrestler currently. Um, Cody Rose and, and then again, Goldust is up there as well. But Goldust doesn't really need the title. I really don't think why they put him on him. But Cody Rhodes and Antonio Cesaro currently. Where would WWE be now, and who could be the greatest stars right now if Orton and Cena never existed? Triple H and Brock Lesnar are some of the guys that would be on the top. Um, but it's hard to imagine life without Super Cena and good old Randy Orton. Um, uh, with two guys like that in the company, so, and the two faces of the WWE that, um, uh, do a lot of mark, that provide a lot of money, but then again, I, I think that Lesnar was trying to go for the NFL in 2004 and try to do something different, and then he went to New Japan Pro Wrestling, and then he went to, uh, and then he went to, uh, the UFC, and then he came back to WWE, so, uh, honestly, yeah, like Mark Lesnar said in that promo when he had an Extreme Rules, um, he would have been, John Cena would have been carrying his bags, um, so, I honestly think John Cena would have, if we didn't have Cena, Brock Lesnar would be one of the top guys, Orton, um, you know, Orton would, if Orton wasn't here, um, there would, Orton to me isn't, I mean, he's a top guy, yes, but he's not the face of the company, he's not a guy that, you know, you trust to go to, like, a local news station, or a local radio station to try to promote the product, because that would be, I mean, like, who wants to go, who wants to hear Randy Orton in the morning when you're driving down the road and want to go to a wrestling show? Well, we got a show tonight, 15 tickets. Like, you, do, you don't want to hear that, you want to hear John Cena who's representing the company well. 
But more than likely, they have Triple H and Brock Lesnar. They, they'd still be the top guy. They'd be the top guy. Last question, final question from Jersey. One, two, three, six, one. I think I got it right. Yeah. Um, uh, who was your favorite wrestler? The Dead Man, The Phenom, The Undertaker. Um, I I really like a lot of wrestlers, but Undertaker's definitely my favorite. I've always loved The Undertaker ever since I first started. I actually started watching wrestling. I saw The Undertaker wrestle Finley on SmackDown. Oh, man. That was pretty cool to see. Um, I, I still have fond memories of the old SmackDown stage with the fist coming out. I have so many fond memories of the old Undertaker when he wrestled in that. I had a great feud with Batista. And there's a lot of different things, but Undertaker's definitely my favorite wrestler of all time. Anyway, guys, that's it from Crimson for Six Here. Thank you for watching this whole 20 minute long Q and A. I'm actually gonna have a lot of links in the description box below, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the uh, links for everybody that I said that I was gonna give shout outs to. I'm going to have uh, my old channel link in the description box below if you wanna check that out. And I'll have um, I recently did my Dream Mat WrestleMania card, my Dream booking my own show for Wrestlemania 30 on the Wrestling Versus site, where I make a couple other videos, but I make more videos on this channel, because this is my channel. Um, so I had that link in the description box below, so you can check a lot of stuff out, because tomorrow will be the day Batista returns, and it's going to be my one year anniversary on YouTube. Congrats, congratulations, pat on the back. Um, I, w I was going to make a uh, WWE DVD collection video, but I realized I can't just put off this Q&A for a long time, because people are going to forget about it and not care. Um, but when we hit 275 subscribers, I'm at 272 now. Um, when we hit 275, I'll do another DVD collection video for you guys because you guys got one at Christmas, and it was like right before I got the 250. Um, so yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. That's pretty much it for Kerbal for Six here yet again, and salute, peace.